the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. And some people have likened our current economic crisis to a soap opera because from moment to moment the characters change they're not remembering their lines they're tripping over them and they're tripping over each other so to help figure out what is really going on in this soap opera i have nick santiago of inthemoneystocks.com hey nick welcome back to financial survival network.com hey carrie great to be back and we are thrilled to have you. So you say this is a soap opera. Just clarify that a little for us. Well, from one day to the next, you really don't know uh, what's going to be said out of the central banks around the world, whether it's the ECB, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, uh, the Japan Central Bank, or the Federal Reserve. Uh, it's almost comical how this quarter alone we had probably some of the worst uh, earnings guidance that I've seen in quite some time, probably since 2009, and the market is here making uh, three-month highs right now. So um, it's pretty incredible, but it, it's all about central bank inflation. As I tell all of my members, we no longer trade stocks. We just trade uh, central bank inflation creation. And uh, <laughs> from day to day, you never know what these guys are going to say. It's, it's like a soap opera. It's almost like um, pro professional wrestling. It's, uh, you know, the, the bears got control for a little while, and the central bankers come in, they pump in some money, and they get control. They, they get the bulls on board, and then, uh, you know, it, something happens, and bond yields spike in, uh, in, in Europe on uh, Spanish or Italian debt. And, you know, believe it or not, Greece isn't even bailed out yet. <laughs> we don't even know what's going on with Greece. I thought we have Greece, Italy. Uh, wait, Greece, they dissolved it. It was like a bad <laughs> corporation. It went <laughs> Chapter 7. And they just chopped it up and sold it off to the highest bidders, right? Didn't that happen to Greece? Or is that going well, I was to happen? Waiting. I, I, I think it's coming, but I'm waiting for them to put Mykonos up for sale. So um, it, 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 it's kind of comical. We're not done with one problem here. And I just got back from Europe about two weeks ago. And uh, the people over there are just so fed up with the bankers. It, it's incredible. I'm just, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see uh, just chaos in the streets eventually. Yeah, well, you've got to feel like, you know, at some point in your life, you feel like you're working for the government and the banksters. You're not working for yourself anymore. Your existence depends on these ne'er-do-well, these ne'er-do-wells doing something that isn't going to blow up the system, that they're somehow miraculously going to save it. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting to the end. I don't think there is any saving it. And they do this kabuki dance that in the final analysis, they don't really get anything done, do they? Well, it seems that that is the case, and uh, it's been proven that that is the case. The irony here is, um, can we survive and can we make uh, uh, money off of it? And, and, and that's what we, want, we need to do as a trader. And um, right now, I mean, people should start to eye gold again very, very soon because that's coming into a, a major time cycle where you maybe you want to own the precious metals again. I mean, this is... This is really the um, only real true form of protection as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and maybe you never really wanted to stop owning them in the first place, right? Well, without a doubt. I mean, I've never sold a single ounce of uh, gold bullion or silver bullion, uh, even in this downturn. And now I'm getting ready for the accumulation phase once again. Yeah, well, it, it certainly looks like we're getting closer. If you look at the chart, which I'm not a big chart watcher because I've been in this move for the long term, but the chart is bouncing along that resistance line. It's really interesting. Even, even somebody like me, who is probably one of the worst traders ever put on the planet, I can see that line, and I can see that gold and silver, they just don't want to go below it, do they? 
Well, they're holding up like rocks, and um, you know we've been in basically, uh, you know, you could say a one-year correction for for gold. I mean, it topped out basically last September. Uh, we're coming up into a one-year cycle, and I think um, gold will have a low this fall. I don't think it it even goes that much lower from where it is. So, and it's holding up. It, it looks somewhat resilient. I've been, I have not been bullish on gold and silver, as you know, as I've been on your show already. And I said sure. the fall season is when I'm going to be looking at it. And so far, so good. But I mean, this is not much. This is just a, a normal correction um, for anything that's had a, a 10-year bull run. Yeah, and and you know, the market, as we both know, always seeks to frustrate the maximum number of participants. And it, when it hit 1950 last summer, everyone was thinking it was going to the moon. It can only go up from here. This is the move we've been waiting for. And yet, what happened? Well, it, it hasn't. It hasn't pulled back all that much. <laughs> what could you say? I mean, this you thing. Know, this thing bucks. has been re- resilient um, for the most part. I mean, if you look at a monthly chart, considering where we were. You know, the price was sitting in uh, 2001 when you're trading at $250 an ounce of gold. But um, what traders need to just see is that um, we never, ever had uh, that parabolic move. And on a trend like this, they, these trends just don't go away that easy. This is a strong trend. The monthly chart still looks, you know, somewhat dynamic on gold. Uh, even if we do trade lower from here, if we even went to 1450, um, it, it, the, the pattern is still well intact. And I think we're coming into a cyclical time now, uh, especially in the fall season, or maybe even later this year, where the central bankers, if and when they do act, and there's euro bonds or there's uh, more stimulus created by the central bank of the United States called the Federal Reserve, um, gold is going to take off again. And, um, you know, it could easily go back up to those old highs and surpass that with, in a heartbeat. You've heard people saying, though, oh, there won't be a QE3. You know, they can't do it. Uh, the market dollar is just going to tank. What's your feeling about that? Well, I, I'm bullish on the dollar right now. I'm, I'm bullish probably for a, a fair amount of this year till the remainder of the year, but I will not be bullish on the dollar next year because they're going to do it. Um, that's all they can do. That's what they know how to do. That's the, um, the, the you know, the ace, the ace card in the deck is – another quantitative easing or stimulus, even if they don't call it quantitative easing, maybe they'll use some other form of transformational vocabulary, but um, they're going to do some sort of of stimulus. I agree that inflation is running wild already. Um, Just since the dollars pulled back over the last couple of weeks, you could just look at the price of gasoline. I don't know if you follow the ETF called the UGA, United States Gasoline Fund, but, you know, this thing was trading down at $45 uh, a share, uh, in basically mid June, and now it's it's all the way up back up to fifty eight dollars. It's going back up to its April high, and um, you know this is something in in real terms. Everyday people have to pay for gasoline, and um, you know President Obama wants to know why gasoline's going up. You just look at the dollar. If the dollar goes down, gasoline goes up. If the dollar goes up, gasoline goes down. But, the well, world's reserve currency. But Nick, there is no inflation. It's two percent according to the numbers that the government's releasing, that the Fed's <laughs> releasing. Are you telling yeah. me that they're not telling us the truth? Is that what you're trying to tell me, that our government well, <laughs> would actually lie to us? I should say your government, because <laughs> I don't feel like it's much of mine anymore. But you really think they'd be lying to us about this? Well, all you have to do is just look at a country like India, look at a place like China, Brazil, look at them, they're screaming and, 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 uh, about inflation. Um, if, the, if the world's reserve currency is the dollar, uh, it's telling you that inflation is high. You don't have to look here. Inflation is not showing up in their forecast or their metrics that they use simply because we have such high unemployment. Um, it, it's going to be disguised and masqueraded. It's not going to be seen. So, you know, the reality of it is people know what they're paying for gasoline. They know what they're paying for food. Those are two things that the, the Fed excludes, minus food and energy. So, uh, again, protect yourself, own some precious metals, especially on this pullback this fall. Everybody should buy a little bit of gold and silver if you can afford it. Yeah, I, I agree with you because I just put in a, a non-inflationary tank of gas in my car that today. It cost me about <laughs> 85 bucks at $4.5 a gallon because I don't like the idea of putting – 
regular into my car. It's got a supercharger. There's problems when you throw regular gas into a non-normally aspirated engine. And, you know, I'm saying, well, gee, uh, and I'm in Westchester County. We're really expensive, no question. But, gee, I think we might have some inflation going on here. You go out to eat and, you know, a halfway decent meal with not a lot of wine and you're into over $100 and it just goes on and on. But I'm sure happy there's no inflation because if there was inflation, we'd really be having problems, you know? Absolutely. You know, another thing you have to look at when you look at the soap opera saga is the Fed funds rate has been at 0% since December 2008. So essentially, you know, the large banks are borrowing um, money at 0%, JP Morgan, Citi, uh, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. This money that is just sitting there, it's just sitting there and and, and the Fed is paying them to keep inter- to keep the money there. So the reality is um, the more money the, these guys create, the more money sits around. They don't have to lend money to make money anymore. It's a different business model. Um, this is, there's, no, there's no other effect but inflation. The, the, the central bankers are trying to inflate their way out of this, and, and that's all it comes down to. Yeah, they're trying to inflate their way out, and they're trying to tell us that they're not trying to inflate their way out, but the numbers don't lie. And well, they... They always say also that they're 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 in favor of a strong dollar policy, but yeah. you, you know that that's not the case. Yeah, that's absurd. I don't know what their idea of a strong dollar is, but all I know is that the world's getting fed up with it. And while the world would like to blame all their problems on the United States, I don't think that's that's totally fair. However, um, you know, there certainly are problems that are creeping up. As a result of it, there's no question about it. Well, we're in one of those uh, situations right now where um, they're really stuck between a rock and a hard place. What is their next move? Um, how many times can they cry wolf about QE3 or another quantitative easing or another stimulus program without actually implementing it? Eventually, they're going to have to act on it or the market is going to uh, say otherwise and, and the market's going to start to move down. Like I said, this is probably the worst earnings season that I could ever remember. If you take a look at Priceline today, I mean, this was a, a leading stock. This stock is getting roasted and toasted, you know, down over 100 points today, so down about 120 points. Really? So, you know, yeah, I mean, and, and they just, you know, Priceline is, uh, was a leading market leader, um, and the stock is just getting hammered today because their guidance is just absolutely atrocious. So when you see something like that, it's telling you what, what really is going on. And on the bigger scheme of things, you know, the market's, uh, again, scratching out a positive gain today. And uh, no vo- the volume is just atrocious in the market. I mean, people would rather, you know, go out and buy, uh, you know, uh, some, some pebbles and rocks than, than buy the stock market right now. I mean, it's, it's, just, a, it's just an anemic uh, volume-traded market right now. And, and, you know, it just shows you the disgust that's going on, uh, on out there with people and, when they see these MF Global debacles and these high-frequency trading mistakes and everything else, it's just putting a black eye under this market, and um, it's just amazing. But the market's staying afloat because of the the words of a few central bankers. Yeah, you just when you see these those MF Globals, and then you see the silver market rigging, and it's obvious that the CFTC is going to do absolutely nothing. Done reports on it. There's no question. And yeah, in I mean, my mind, is there any question in your mind that there's uh, <laughs> that there's gambling going on in this uh, in this establishment? You know, for well, real. You, yeah. you, you know what it comes down to is that the, the arrogance is at an all time high. <laughs> I mean, that's really yeah. what it comes down to. You know, mm-hmm. nobody cares anymore um, if they're caught or not. It, it just seems like if you're a big shot, the arrogance is at an all time high, and that's that's where we are at this stage of the game. And if you're caught, you just say you're sorry, slap on the wrist, a nuisance fine of a hundred million or a couple hundred million bucks, and life goes on, right? That, that's it. And in the interim, if whatever your fine is, you already made 20, 20 times that prior. So it's it's just the cost of doing business to these guys. Yeah, no question about it. So Nick, find out more about you. Read your blog. Sign up. Uh, where do we go? Come right over to IntheMoneyStocks.com. We offer a seven-day free trial carry to our intraday stock chat. Also, 
to our research center. You get all of our cycle work. You'll get all of our nightly setups. Everything is there. Uh, try it out seven days. You have nothing to lose. Um, most people that come in, they, they wind up staying with us. Excellent. All right. Well, Nick, we'll talk to you in a while. Thanks for coming back on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com to hear this interview as well as others we've done with Nick and various financial luminaries around the world, FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Nick, be well. We'll talk to you soon. You do the same. Thank you.